What up everyone, it's your boy xman 87 here bringing you another Storm Collectibles video and what I have for you today is the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat 2020 New York Comic Con exclusive Motaro action figure review. Before I get into everything, if you could please leave a thumbs up like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now with that said, let's get it! Now to start off with accessories, you get a bunch of interchangeable hands that you see here. So you get two closed fisted hands with Motaro, two stylized hands, and then two gripping hands. And he also comes with two extra wrist pegs, so that'll come in handy just in case one breaks, you never know. Then for the bonus skeleton figure that's included in this set, you get 10 interchangeable hands. So you get two closed ones, two gripping ones, and then a bunch of stylized action hands. Next up, you get his projectile effect that would shoot out of his tail in the game. So this looks really cool, and I have a light underneath, so it's making it pop real nice. Then you get this base that comes with a few stackable stands, and this will support the projectile effect. So there is this peg hole you'll see right there. You just plug that in. And then boom, this will work nicely in your display if you want to recreate that gimmick maneuver. Then he comes with an extra interchangeable head. And as you can see, he's all bloodied up because it's the New York Comic Con exclusive version. This has the blood and the different color skeletons. So just getting a close look at the blood, man, that looks really nice. I really like how they use the glossy style here to make the blood look fresh on him. You got the white pupils and black eyeliner around it. You have the mohawk, which looks really cool. And then the horns here, man, wow. Blood on that too, very highly detailed. Also like how there's some black there, so it makes him look like he's bruised up. You'll see that throughout the figure. Storm really killed it with this Hesco. Wait till you see the other one. Taking a look at Mataro here, and all I have to say is, man, I don't even know what to say because I'm mind blown. Saying it's mind blowing is an understatement because I'm left speechless. I shouldn't even talk for the rest of the video because there are no words to describe how ecstatic I feel right now by owning a Mataro figure. Something I thought I'd never see in figure form and Storm delivered. Excuse my tight framing here as he's tall and massive, but I wanted to show you that at his tallest with just the hind legs, he measures at 13 inches tall. So he's really big and when he's on all four legs, he's at about 10 inches and measures about 18 inches across with the tail fully extended. But anyway, let's get this guy all posed up. Let's see what he is about. And remind you, it is the bloody version. So if you're squeamish or you have a weak stomach, if you're afraid of real blood or fake blood, I'm just giving you a warning. So yeah, as I was speaking about the tail, all across since it's bendable, it is, yeah, the figure will be about 18 inches across. This is insane. And this tail has to be one of the best bendable features on a figure that I, I've ever, ever experienced. I mean, it is so sturdy, so strong. The wire, the cable here, it's very impressive. And there are no holes poked at all. So it's all streamlined, all flush. It, it just looks so good, man. They did an amazing job here. So right here is where you would start the bend. I wish it was a little bit, you know, longer than that. Like right here would have been really nice. But, you know, the tail does swivel. The tail has a weak swivel. I will say that. It's, I don't even know. Kind of, it feels kind of funky. So I'm just going to stop swiveling it from there. If I need to turn his tail this way or this way, I'll just point it in whatever direction I need it. But you're going to get a lot of use out of this tail because you could curl it if you want to trap enemies, you know, have them squeeze them to death or choke them out whatever really adds to the fun factor of this figure taking a close look at the second head sculpt he's yelling it looks fierce it is awesome i really like the expression here the tongue came out sculpted out nicely even the teeth nothing is altered on the mohawk here the other one had blood on it this one doesn't it's clean you know, got some bruises right there, blood splatter, so does the horns. Just an incredible face sculpt. Then taking a look at the rest of the body, is a great sculpt here. He could have used maybe just a little bit more bulk, but honestly, I'm fine. It, it fits with everything else. And you get great sculpts on the muscles, you know, the chest, the arms especially too. These look really nice. And he's got some spikes right there on the forearm and the elbow, like... That is really cool, and it's really sharp, too. The back looks great, too. Very muscular. And they still use that pliable torso, so, you know, you're still going to get a lot of good range out of this guy. And if you do bend them forward using that ab crunch, you are going to get a big gap right there, but that's kind of normal with Storm. Again, they want you to get the most range. But that's on the back, not so much the front. The most you'll get on the front is that kind of gap. And then looking at the legs, you know, and since he's a Centaurian, 
he, ugh, man, he has this centaur part of the body that's just amazing looking. This is definitely the highlight here. And it is surprisingly articulate. I'm just blown away with how Storm Collectibles can pull this off. And you got his armored underwear right there or whatever the hell this is. Because it's just, wow, it just keeps going all the way to his tail and even at the top. So this is like the longest thong I've ever seen. <laughs> Just giving you a close-up look at the sculpt on the legs. These are great. Look at the veins bulging out right there and all across the legs. You're going to see that throughout. Really nice. And some blood splatter there. Oh, yeah, the heels right here. These spikes, again, they're sharp just like the arms. So you're getting them on all four legs. Then you got the shoes right there and the back legs. The hind legs look really great, man. They balance him really well. And this part of the centaur body, you know, you got a great sculpt right here on the fur. So you get this nice fur pattern. Get some blood splatter there. Man, that looks really, really great. I wish there was a way that he had a cut right here to, you know, be able to pivot. So if you want him walking around like he's circling around you, uh, that would look really good. But honestly, when I think about it, if I wanted to pose him on his hind legs, that probably could have posed a problem for balancing because the last thing you need is for this area to be a little, you know, loose or wobbly and it brings the whole figure down. So I'm okay with this. I think this was the smartest route to take because the sculpt is just unbelievable here and I wouldn't want that broken up. Then you get the tail again. It's just amazing looking. Really like the silver metallic paint we're getting throughout. As you can see, all the way to the end, this thing is really, really long. Blood splattered throughout, painted nicely throughout, and this is the tip of the tail. Also included in this exclusive set is a green skeleton. And this is cool because I didn't show this figure off in the accessory segment. And while he looks like he's packed in to be an additional accessory, in all reality, this is a real figure here. Because this guy is just a repaint from the Golden Axe Skeleton Warrior. And he's fully articulated, just in a different paint deco. The clean version of Motaro will come with a skeleton just like this, but with blood covered all over it to make it look like he's ripping the skeleton out of the body, you know? But still, if you wanted to give this guy accessories, you know, if you want to take the fun a little further, you can do that as well. So yeah, if you want your green skeleton to fight back against Motaro, then you can, but he's not going to stand a chance no matter what. So this skeleton measures at about 7 inches tall. As I said before, Motaro is 10 inches. So now you can see how he looks next to an average Storm Collectibles figure. Now before we cover articulation, just to take a look at this green skeleton it's actually translucent it looks really really nice and you get some dark spots where the pegs are throughout so you'll notice that any dark spot you'll see those are where the joints are but yeah other than that I mean it came out really really nice I like this idea because you can make this skeleton glow in your photography with some nice lighting anyway for articulation his head doesn't really move up but it moves down it's left right and it does have a good head tilt the jaw is articulated, so it moves up and down. <laughs> That's funny. His arms move that far up. That's all you're going to get, so it's still good. Moves down all around. Just be careful when you go all around. There's this sharp part of the shoulder blade that it can get stuck. And uh, you got the arm swivel right there. You got the elbow swivel, and he does have a single-jointed elbow at the 90-degree mark. That's good with me for a skeleton, you know. And he's got the wrist swivel and the multi-directional ball joint. Two ball joints right here on the spinal cord. So he's got a great diaphragm joint. Moves that far down. That's incredible. And moves that far back. And it swivels, but it does not move side to side. I mean, you're going to get a little wiggle, but nothing to really pivot it and keep it steady there. Now for the legs, he has a drop down thigh and his legs move that far apart. They do kick up really high and moves that far back. So yeah, it just looks so weird. You could get so much range out of this guy. It's amazing. And he's got a thigh swivel right there too, slightly. Single jointed knee, no heel to the bony ass. And you got the knee swivel. You got the ankles that move up, down. They do pivot. He's on the ball joint. So, you know, swivels. Pivot in any direction you like, and he has a toe joint, so that is pretty cool. Alright, to cover articulation with Mataro, his head looks that far up, and looks that far down, left, right, and he does have a really nice pivot, and it rocks around. His arms move that far up, 
and it moves down. He's got the butterfly joint that rocks back and forth. And you could rotate his arm all around. You got that shoulder swivel, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows that bend in that far. So that is really good for some big arms. And then he's got the multi-directional ball jointed hinge. He's got a double diaphragm joint so he can move that far forward. That is really good. Just testing out the range a little more. You got... A ball joint right here at the waist and on the upper torso so you get some really good range out of this guy actually I just went a little deeper look at that that is amazing and then he moves that far back you got a waist swivel and you get an upper torso swivel and a nice pivot on both sides and to cover the centaur part of the body the legs are surprisingly articulate so his legs can move that far apart look at that <laughs> that's really good and the back legs will, well, they move in and out. So you do get that. It won't move as far apart as the front legs do, but still great movement. Then the front legs can move up that far and that far back, but you get these joints as well. So the upper thigh of this leg, as I guess you want to say, can move up that far. This part moves down really well, so you could get a good fold there and up. And with the ankles, got the ball joint, so it swivels up, down. His back legs move that far up front and that far back, which is really good because, you know, you got to stand them on his hind legs to get some nice poses. It does have a thigh swivel right here, as well as the front, I forgot to mention, so it does swivel there. Then at the knees right here, they bend in that far. Uh, the lower part of the legs can move up that far, back, and the same with the ankles, up, down and they swivel and they kind of have a pivot then lastly the tail like i showed you before it looks like it has a swivel but it just kind of really doesn't but you have this whole tail that's bendable so i mean this makes up for it and there you have it that is mataro truly an amazing figure and i just wanted to show you that he can carry the skeleton with just one hand and he balances perfectly so you can see he's in mid air but now let's kick it over to some comparisons now for some comparisons here is mataro next to another mortal kombat 3 character we have the bloody edition baraka here he is next to lord raiden here he is next to cyrax and ermac here he is next to the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Sub-Zero and the regular Scorpion. Here he is next to the Emperor of Outworlds, Shao Kahn, and had to save the best for last as the Centaurians and Shokans are rivals. Here is Mataro next to Prince Goro. Alright, and now to wrap things up, my final rating is a 10 out of 10. Total awesomeness. Storm can do no wrong. They're not one of those companies that say, oh, well, we gotta start things off with the small stuff first before we move on to the big stuff. Nope, not them at all. You ever heard of the saying, go big or go home? Well, they always go big and never go home. And it just proves to show how ambitious they are as they confidently nail these figures on their first try. I love it because other companies shouldn't make excuses for first attempt failures. They set a new bar these last few years. They take the time to get it right the first go around. They really know what to give collectors what they want. This figure is heavily bundled with accessories and a bonus figure. Those Golden Axe skeletons were originally sold as a 2-pack at $55. Splitting that would make one skeleton cost $27.50. Now these oversized figures always go for roughly $110. They just threw in a full-fledged $27 figure into this pack for free. They didn't have to do that, but it just shows how much they care. The only real gripe I had with this is the tail not being able to fully rotate all around. Then again, it could be due to the cables that are wired inside. But that super bendable tail makes up for that loss. I wonder if it's just my copy. I do have the clean version on pre-order still, so I'll check that one when it comes in the mail. I like to have both versions. As a photographer and a huge Mortal Kombat fan, I can't display my figures fighting each other without blood. Only if I set up an intro or a non-fight scene, but it's needed for MK figure variants. This figure was so much fun to pose around, stomping opponents and such, as well as to photograph. The sculpt, paint, accessories, and everything else is just a flawless victory. So now I kick it back to you all. What are your thoughts on this Mataro figure? It's breathtaking for sure. This is really making me want a Kintaro for their next oversized figure. Comment below, let me know, we'll chat about it. That was my review, please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, link is in the description below. Get your Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat figures at Big Bad Toy Store, link is in the description below. Hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up. Share and subscribe if you're new. Enjoy the pics at the end of the video. See you on the next review. Peace, peace.